again. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is to answer a question that I get quite a bit, and that is, what is the difference between OBEs, or out-of-body experiences, and astral projection? Now, some people sort of loop them in the same boat, but for me, I make a distinction. An out-of-body experience is when you are consciously aware by way of your light copy body or what many refer to as the astral body you are totally aware of your physical vessel by way of an objective point of view meaning you are perceiving your physical body or your immediate environment by way of your light copy body some people have even written me and said that they never thought this stuff was real they thought it was a bunch of crap until they had their own experience and they talk about finding themselves waking up and being just outside of their house or on their roof or within their room thinking they're going to the restroom and noticing that they, they're able to walk through a wall or what have you. Those are out-of-body experiences, meaning you are still within your 3D frame of mind, so to speak, or you're, you're still within your 3D construct, but you're experiencing it objectively. Astral projection is when we are able to travel far beyond our 3D or our immediate environment or our 3D perspective or construct. If you're astral projecting, you are able to travel anywhere you can go to another dimension, you can go to another planet, you can go in outer space. And of course, this is all a matter of how well you master your astral projection or master your astral body. It takes many years to get to that level. But if one were to do that, yes, you can travel anywhere. Astral mobility, astral projection, frequently asked questions, compilation remix edition. Question one, why do some people astral project and others can't? The reason why some people are more sensitive to their conscious astral projection and OBE's experience in contrast to others varies from person to person. Factors involved are our inherent differences in sensitivity, level of openness, beliefs, fears, diet, and stress levels. Other factors such as drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and the abuse of sexual energy affects one's ability to not only astral project, but to perceive or interact with anything beyond our physical construct. These aforementioned variables, depending on which applies to each individual, can and does affect our ability to not only project, but broadcast or perceive or experience anything beyond third density mind construct. Most people who consciously or spontaneously ask to project tend to disengage in as many vices in this regard. Those of us who have these experiences tend to have very open minds, very sensitive, intuitive, and have a more balanced way of conducting our daily lives. So in just, everyone can ask to project or have an OBE, but many are holding onto low vibratory vices that prevents the conscious unlocking of our multi-dimensional potential. Number two, when one is astral projecting, does one still experience the physical body? The physical body is not necessarily a part of the astral projection experience per se, but its physical presence in most cases can still be felt most of the time because a portion of our awareness remains with our physical form as we explore. I would be remiss if I were not to add that there may be moments when one may lose all connection or sense of the physical body. Question three, 
music do you play it before ap if not then how do you keep your five senses from receiving signals that can disturb an ap soft relaxing music or binaural beats have been used by many people in order to achieve an astral projection experience however as with anything one size or technique doesn't fit all therefore the best ways to discover what technique that will best help us to relax our physical bodies for an astral projection experience is to experiment with different techniques until we find one that works i personally recommend that people develop a meditation technique in order to control and quiet the mind before applying any astral projection techniques question four is it possible to determine one's frequency if we were to pay attention to the vibratory rates of the astral body this would give us some indication of our frequency for instance if the astral body is buzzing and moving very slowly in its assessing realms that are heavy or uneasy in some way this is an indication of a lower frequency on the contrary if the astral body is vibrating and moving and flying out and about at lightning speeds and assessing happy joyful and beautiful planes this is an indication of a higher frequency as of now there are no scientific way of measuring our vibratory frequency but if we were to pay attention to the realms that we access and how much resistance we may come across during each experience this will give us an idea of where we are in this regard question five how real is the astral environment for you would you say it's as real as reality or perhaps even more real the astral world is much like how we experience our current 3d state it's all in first person but everything that we see and feel is in high definition there are no limitations only those that we put on ourselves and yes a great many of the experiences are more real than what most would consider reality to be for some people the experience may seem more dreamlike but the variables that make our perception of the experiences one way or another will be largely based on one's level of awareness frequency and intent Question six, have you noticed an increased psychic function in your regular everyday life because of AP? Yes, I have. And many other people report that things like clairvoyance become more developed when projecting often. Others become highly intuitive, psychic, and have an inner knowing of information, past, present, and future that one may not be consciously aware of how they are coming to their conclusions. If one was already multi-sensory, including remote viewing, prior to consciously astral projecting, their abilities can become heightened after experiencing conscious astral projection. Question seven, what would you say how much alcohol is a detriment to astral projection? If one drinks alcohol to the point of losing focus and control of their motor skills, we know that this is a detriment and will certainly prevent anything of consciousness, let alone an astral projection experience. I personally do not see how alcohol would or could be used to help a positive astral projection experience. Question 8. How do we know that our astral projection and out-of-body experience isn't real or not? Anyone who's ever experienced an astral projection or out-of-body experience OBE, will attest that the experience is real. One can literally 
feel a very powerful separation and distinct sensation of weightlessness of the body, of the astral body, in contrast to the denser physical body. The experiences occur in first person in the same way in which we perceive our so-called 3D state. But what we can see and do is far beyond third density constructs. These experiences are accompanied by the universal description of vibrations, buzzing, humming, the blowing of wind, hearing voices, and other unique or strange sounds. The other factor of truth is that astral projections and OBE testimonies and stories are well documented and described identically throughout human history by people of all walks of life. If these events were of the imagination or the result of some kind of sleep paralysis, then surely the experience would be far more rare, vast in description by the person who's experiencing it. Since the latter is not the case, one would have to conclude that this is a real experience that's inherent to our awareness. Astral projection and OBEs are very personal experiences and could never be really proven by way of a third party. Experience is and will always be the best teacher when it comes to this subject matter. And the beauty is that anyone can learn a technique and experience this life-altering profound truth for themselves. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the questions that I get regarding astral projection. Many of you are saying that you cannot move beyond the vibrational point. And there are several reasons why that is, and I'm going to list them. Whether you want to accept them or not, hey, I'm just giving information. All I ask is that when I give it to you, try it. Try it the tips that I give you and see if you get a different result. There's nothing that I share that you cannot figure out on your own. In fact, that is the point. I give information and people like me give information so that you can do your own homework and come to your own conclusion because as with everything else that involves raising your consciousness, it is best understood when you experience it or achieve it on your own no one can make you see it so having said that one of the reasons why many of us are un unable to move beyond the vibrational point number one excessive masturbation why could that or how could that possibly create a problem well when you masturbate particularly us males we give off a lot of energy it takes a lot of energy you lose a lot of energy if you're not having someone or someone there to balance that energy that you feel a love connection with you are basically wasting energy and that weakens your base chakra in order to have uh, a out-of-body experience or an act full on astral projection you need charge you need energy and if you're expelling your energy or if your energy is tied to low vibratory thought patterns and behaviors such as fear lustfulness anger hatred throw in poor nutrition the fast food restaurants that have enormous amounts of chemicals to keep you sluggish slow and asleep I'm going to come back and talk about that at another time because, yeah, there's a reason why these fast food restaurants are now open 24 hours and everything else is supersized. So I digress. I'm coming back to that one. But it is the charge. You need the right amount of charge. Getting sun, proper nutrition, avoiding uh, lustful sex expelling sexual energy using sexual energy with people and persons you have no emotional love or, or genuine connection for this weakens the amount of energy that you could be using to charge yourself to experience and push yourself beyond the physical vessel
Now, the other side is that those of us who are able to get out, you're wondering, why can't I control the experience? This is why I come back and I'm always talking about meditation and breathing. This helps you to get more in tune with your mind, body, and soul. When your mind, body, and soul is in more in and alignment when you astral project you are in more control and that control comes by way of thought and focus so if there's something that you want to experience or do is simply by way of thought for instance if I find myself out of my body what I do is number one remain calm no fear remain calm and then I think up you think it, you command it in your mind and remain calm and when your body starts to move, remain calm and go with it. If you want to visit a friend, think of their face. Think of the friend and say whatever and however way you want to visit Charlotte. Let's say that's your friend's name. Just think of them and feel what you feel when you're with them while remaining calm. Your astral body will go there. It's all controlled by thought. But again, your thoughts cannot be focused, clear, and concise if your body, physical body, and your soul and spirit and your focus is all out of alignment. Is astral projection dangerous? One of the things that we must always be mindful of is no matter what is presented to us, that we always consider the source first and foremost. Who is giving the information? Is it someone who has, who's speaking from experience? Is it someone who's speaking from what they've been told? Is it someone who has a hidden agenda that serves those who are service to self? It's more of us awakened by letting go of old paradigms and long-held programming there will be an acceleration of fear-mongering and misinformation. We must be cautious of those who draw more attention to negative, one-sided perspectives, especially if the presenter is projecting from a place of arrogance, egotism, dogma, contempt, anger, defensiveness, and fear. Astral projection is almost no more different than what we have here in this temporal third density reality. We have negative, we have positive. We have those who have more knowledge than the others. We have manipulators, we have users and abusers. We have those who are compassionate, we have those who care. There is much to be gained and there are pitfalls. There are dangerous situations and then there are situations to be triumphant. The difference is that when we are in the astral world, we're not bound by gravity. We're not bound by the laws of this temporal reality. So everything is far more heightened. If we were to look deeper into the story of those who have had negative astral projection experiences, we would likely find that there was something within or by way of their own actions, be it consciously or unconsciously, that created or attracted their experience. So in a nutshell, no matter what happens on the astral planes, it will still be a reflection or magnification of us. Would you please tell us who are the etheric doctors that you talked about in one of your previous videos? Okay. I cannot answer this without first explaining that, as I've said before, we are multi-dimensional. That means that we are uh, a part of a greater, 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 much more complex system. Most of that system is not within the light spectrum that we see. Of course, you're looking at me, you look in the mirror, you look and you look around you. What you see is what is within this vibratory bandwidth that is related to and bound by the laws of this dimensional phys physicality or physical reality, so to speak. There are other parts of you that is not within this light spectrum. Okay, we have an etheric body. 
The etheric body is an exact replica in size and mold of the physical body, organs and all. It's a, the exact replica. And with this replica, because it is a, a, a it's it's a it's the life force of the physical body. Let's put it that way. And it has the all of the replica of all the organs, even reproductive, all of it. Everything is there. But it is a much subtler, lighter, vibrating body. Most of us cannot see it and is not aware of it because it is vibrating on a different dimension. When I speak about etheric doctors, I'm talking about beings who are made of the same material. Remember when I talked about how spirit would be would appear to be solid and physical to spirit. Um, astral would appear to be physical and solid to astral. Physical is, is uh, appears to be solid and physical to physical, etc., etc. All of these are a part of our multi-dimensional nature. We are focused and physical, but we also are part etheric. We have emotional bodies. We have an astral body. The astral body is a smaller um, copy of the physical body, but it has no internal organs. It's a matter of what we shift our consciousness into. Now, although we have all of these different aspects of our existence going on, most are not consciously aware of one over the other or maybe we are aware of two and not the rest and you know it, it gets a little discombobulated someone who is one or in complete oneness is connected to all levels be it consciously or through a feeling and not only that they are connected with other aspects of themselves and the greater whole um, included so when we talk about etheric beings we're talking about beings who have not or are not incarnated in physicality. Some people have called them angels. Now I use these terms like angels and um, I put definitions, general definitions on these things because I know, understand that many of us have to have a from, frame of reference to understand these, these things. And so some people may have called them angels. They generally appear, you know, it's shimmery, bright, white, pure light. Uh, or we will see a form like a like a typical head, and you see a body, but uh, not necessarily any definitive features. And we will see what appears to be wings, or you know, a bright white light around their auric field. And these beings are um, so connected to the element or their elements, their pure energy. And many times, what they do, particularly those of us who have very very challenging missions here, they come in. And if we are, for instance, out of balance with the physical body, if there's sickness or something developing in the body, if we ask for them or if they sense that there is a, a distortion in our vibratory field in connection to our life force or physical body, they will come in and they will work on the physical body. Now, when they come, it feels as if they are working with your physical body, it feels just as physical to the physical body because at that point when they come in, our consciousness is, it becomes split. It becomes aware of the physical self and aware of the uh, the copy, the etheric copy. So when they are touching and feeling the, the etheric body, it feels as if they are touching and interacting with the physical. But they are, but of course, this is not what is actually happening. So when they do the work, the healing, the repairs, in the uh, the etheric body, when the etheric body uh, merges back or molds back with the physical, the work that they've done eventually um, molds and and works in conjunction to the physical body. So it, it kind of collapses on itself and repairs things that are going on in the physical body. You are seeing dragons or beings that resemble dragons in your lucid dream state or your astral projection state, chances are these are spirit guides. Now, I know this is going to sound really out there to some people who are just coming into this kind of information or people who are just waking up to it, but some of the most spiritual beings have been 
dragon beings or dragon like creatures I have had my own here's a drawing or depiction of the dragon that I had seen years ago and many of them are very beautiful very spiritual beings this is one of the, the things that we as humans must get beyond judging a book by its cover we tend to associate something that's physically attractive to us or something that looks like us as trusting and anything that looks nothing like us or ha doesn't have the form that is similar to us or that we recognize that it's automatically evil or demonic this is a gross misjudgment and we really need to get away from that so if we look all throughout history we will find that many of our ancestors uh, and many cultures had a reverence for the dragon there's a reason for that I'm not going to get into that but yes dragon beings typically if you are seeing them in your dream state or the astral realm these more than likely are spirit guides um, I've been trying to astral project for some time now I seem to get stuck at the vibrational point what am I doing wrong now this one is definitely one of the most frequently asked questions that I receive and truthfully that I can't give a general answer for everyone because everyone's reason is different now I did do a, a, a video some time ago where I talk about the basic reasons why many are not aware or can't astral project or even perceive beyond this particular controlled um, paradigm but there are other variables involved as well and again that's an individual case by case scenario but I will say this some of us are just trying too hard and we are um, being somewhat impatient this is why I'm, I'm always talking about raising our vibration work on the self slay the ego begin to eat things that with healthy living enzymes you know get away from um, things that makes you feel as if you are separate from the whole work on the self because what I found is that when we work on the self, the in, inside, and becoming more balanced, all these things, it'll just kind of happen. It'll just sort of unfold. It'll happen when the time is right per person. I'm not really one of those people that just say, oh, just run out there and do it. Because I understand that it is best to be as balanced as possible before we leap. As I always say, we should always look before we leap and always have the best possible preparation before we take on anything. And so when we work on the self, raise our vibration and become more aware and recall more of who and what we are and we put out the intent to do these things, it will just happen. It, I, I promise you it will just unfold itself and you will be in a better position to manage and handle the experiences when they do come. Next question. I've heard that astral projection is really demonic possession. Is this true? If someone believes that, that is true for them. If you believe that, it will be true for you. I don't see it in that way. Can someone manipulate the astral body? Absolutely, 100%, whether you believe in it or not. But possession is, is a whole other story because, you know, when someone talks about possession and astral projection, and when they put it in one boat like that, it's basically giving all of, it's a way of giving all of your power and all of your potential to an external force. And if that's what you believe and that's what you're into and that's what you want to do, it is your reality. You're writing your script. You know, go right ahead. But again, if astral projection is something that you've experienced and you know that it was, gen it was a genuine aspect of yourself, do not go with what someone else's definition of that experience is. You have to go with what you feel in your core essence. better believe astral sex is real as a matter of fact astral sex is far more intense far more powerful than the dense physical version of sex now one of the things that a lot of us may or may not know is that sex is far more complex than we have been taught 
we think sex is just some biological function to procreate. And on one dimension, one level, one layer, this is true. However, because we are multidimensional and very, very complex organisms, we can use sex for multiple reasons. Well, as I've explained in the past, we all have an emotional body, astral body, etheric body. Of course, we see we have a physical body. And when we are on the astral realm, we are basically our thoughts, desires, feelings, etc. turn inside out, meaning we are far more sensitive and far more prone to attract or create within that realm our desires or play out our desires, fears, etc., emotions, whatever the case may be. So when we are on the ice realm and we have a lot of uh, high sexual energy, high sex drive, this is a place where our thoughts and desires for sex, when we're not feeling that we're getting enough on a physical plane, can be further explored or played out. It is also the realm in which those of us who practice abstinence and celibacy for a prolonged period, we can balance those limitations, meaning we put limitations on our physical life for whatever reason. For instance, for me, my limitation in this physical life as to why I have never had an active sex life or regular active sex life is because I have yet to meet anyone that I have a mental connection with first and foremost and then everything else fall in place thereafter. I can't just go strictly on physical. I can but it doesn't do anything for me so I don't even bother. So for someone such as myself who practice abstinence and celibacy for years and prolonged periods, the astral realm would be a good place for me to engage in astral sex if I so choose or if someone who is mentally or equally yoked with me be magnetized to me and we um, engage in that way. And so what happens when we're on the uh, astral realm having astral sex, it is basically more or less a meeting of consciousness first and foremost. And then there's a blending of energy particles. Because we remember we don't have internal organs with our astral body as we do with the physical body. But we can still engage in pleasure, bonding, creation in a different way, manifestation by the way of astral sex through that energetic core, the connection that we have with one another through our uh, energetic systems, which many people call chakras, energy points, energy centers. And those energy centers and chakras that are in alignment with our erogenous zones and our genitals, areas that the human conscious mind is used to associating sex with can and will be stimulated by way of the core connection and the astral merging of two beings, meaning it could be, it doesn't matter the gender, let's just say that, it doesn't matter the gender or the sex on the astral realm because, uh, because again the, um, the, the level of limitations that we had here are nowhere near as it is when we are on the astral realm. We have a lot more freedom. So the astral realm is basically a place where two beings can join energetically and consciously and create, manifest, generate intense pleasure, bonding, explore one another's consciousness, co-create on the astral realm for something to eventually manifest in the physical, so on and so forth. Just close your eyes and imagine the best orgasm that you've ever had. Okay, and picture where you felt that orgasm. Now multiply that feeling times every single cell in your body from head to toe. Imagine every single cell in your body exploding in extreme ecstasy and bliss. There can be a connection between astral sex and physical sex. Meaning that when we are having astral sex again, the human conscious mind is going to interpret it in a physical, linear way. And there are signals going on between the parties who are engaging in the astral sex. 
And so the brain then becomes stimulated because it is connecting and is perceiving the experience. So there will be electrical signals sent to the etheric core down to the physical body and the in the orgasm and the pleasure will be or can be so intense that we will ejaculate without touching ourselves or have an intense orgasm. Celebrities astral project as well, okay, because they're biological beings just like the rest of us. However, there are some celebrities who have been initiated in certain schools of thought where they have mastered astral projection. And so, because celebrities are constantly put in the forefront of our consciousness, and there is a romanticism with celebrity and celebrityism, that's my own word, celebrityism by the general population, there are many people who desire these celebrities because of the constant implanting of their, their, their personage, of their being, of their presence in the conscious mind. And so, these celebrities, some of them, and I'm not going to mention any names, just as they do on the physical plane when they have sex with groupies all over the world, they also out there on the astral realm taking advantage of those who have desires for them. They pick up on a signal of someone who is having fantasies or secret thoughts and desires about it. And there are also entities, which is another subject matter, who can take on the form, who can manipulate our consciousness to perceive them as some celebrity or someone that we're desiring. That's another conversation we have, and I'll just come back to that one. Yes, but not in the way that we think in terms of a physical body. If we have actual sex with someone who is um, who has a mental um, disconnection or some kind of spiritual disconnection or has malicious intent or, or some kind of malicious agenda or what have you, we can invite disease of consciousness and then the mind and of course because the conscious mind is connected to the physical body, that manifestation or that co-creation can eventually come down and manifest in the physical body as depression, forgetfulness, um, paranoia, uh, tiredness, lack of clarity. Can also create an attachment situation as well. And I've already talked about attachments. If you guys are not familiar with that one, go to my YouTube channel and type in attachments. Uh, astral baby sex and the video that I had done on the subject matter should come up. What are the benefits of astral projection? There are many benefits to a conscious astral projection experience. For starters, it's one of the most exciting and liberating experiences that we can have. Imagine being weightless and being able to fly anywhere within the omniversal mind. Doing this can expand our awareness and creative abilities. Astral projection can allow us direct access to any system of thought we choose to explore. In other words, we can find the answers to our most pressing questions and not rely on superstition or dogma. Astral projection also opens us up to any or all of the following. Heightened knowledge of self. Improved overall well-being. Improved self-confidence heightened urge to take responsibility for one's own thought projections and actions, renewed or intensified respect for all life, reduction of stress, anxiety, and hostility, heightened intellectual capacity, synchronization to the energetic body. Astral projection certainly helps to overcome any fear of death. When someone had written me and, and, and asked that if we actually fall on the ground if we hit the ground in our dream or while we're astral projecting uh, that means that we actually die in our physical life if that's the case there wouldn't be a soul on the planet but again these are fear tactics used to frighten people away from something that someone does not want us tapping into. Why? Because that would be a threat to the ego, the structure, the matrix. 
What are the biggest misconceptions or beliefs as it relates to astral projection? One of the most common beliefs is that we open ourselves to demons or negative spirits upon astral projecting. There is some truth in this statement, but let me clarify the general cause for such an experience. My journey has shown that the astral realm operates under the principles of electromagnetic attraction. Hence, one could attract what they perceive as a negative entity or spirit if she, he, harbor aspects of these energies. For instance, if one is in constant fear, anger, hostility, rage, depression, lust, and sadness, these vibrations can and often do magnetize or attract situations that mirror our inner thoughts and emotions. So in essence, if one is faced with attracting situations that they are not pleased with, there is a lesson to be learned here. This is their opportunity to face their inner demons the lower self and transmute these energies into love and healing. On the contrary, if one is filled with compassion, love, genuineness, and pure in their intent, she, he may attract energies that will mirror these aspects. They will have access to realms that support their vibratory frequency. So you see, astral projection is actually a tool to which we use to explore, experience, and sometimes test our multi-dimensional selves. We may even be tested on these planes so that we may rise above things that may be hindering spiritual growth, awareness, and knowledge. Some will say that a negative being or spirit could possess the body or cut their astral cord while traveling. Neither claim is found to be true. The astral body cannot be harmed because it is composed of energy. We cannot be possessed by other entities while projecting neither. The reason why is because a portion of our consciousness remains when we travel and there is a silver cord that connects the astral and physical body. The astral cord sends electrical signals between the physical and astral. This is a mechanism that ensures that we will always find our way back to our physical vessel. The silver cord is very sensitive and will pull us back instantly should there be a shift around our physical form or auric field. Think about it. We spent many years growing with and attuning our consciousness to and with our physical bodies in order to control it. Now is it logical to accept or believe that a spirit can just walk in and take control over a body that has taken us a lifetime to operate? Of course not. Our physical form has our unique vibratory imprint and no other spirit or entity with a different vibratory imprint can just step in and take over. If we truly had the understanding that exploring the unknown is not only our birthright, but is absolutely necessary to evolve as a species, if this was set in motion thousands, if not millions of years ago, and there was never this tug of war to create a caste system, a system of have or have nots, and we didn't have fear. Can you imagine how advanced humanity would be right about now? Then the other um, notion is that astral projection is just flat out dangerous. So we shouldn't do it because it's dangerous. All right, so we may as well just stay in our homes and never go out because we know that there's danger around every corner right here in, in the 3D world, you know. It's actually, there's more danger here on the physical plane from my experience than anything I've ever experienced on the astral plane. But are we going to stay in our homes and keep the doors locked and not go outside or travel or visit a loved one because it's dangerous in the world? No, we don't. So again, I'm just putting, putting some things out there to 
help us to realize how much we're getting in our own way due to beliefs, unfounded beliefs, and fear, and conditioning, and listening to third parties who have an agenda. Third parties who feel that if you should gain more knowledge than they do, you could no longer be under their thumb. Being raised in a Christian environment and with Christian beliefs, I was taught that astral projection is opening our spirits to the demonic world. That is why we experience evil entities and possible demonic possession when we open up our spirits to them. Is this true? If not, why? The answer to your question is yes and no. Astral projection alone does not open us up to demon possession or, or demonic spirits. However, Astral projecting in a low vibratory state of mind can and often does attract entities, sometimes those what you call possessions, which are really attachments, and I'll explain the difference. A lot of times those attachments are not what you call demons. Sometimes they are people who actually lived on an earth plane who are stuck and they are attaching themselves to feed off of the energy of people who are still on earth. You also have entities or parasites that are fragments of our former astral bodies because when we pass away, the first line of decay, of course, is the physical body, but the astral body also decomposes as well. So many times what happens when we go into the astral realm and we start to lose the astral body composition, certain parts of that composition maintains consciousness. And if that consciousness is of a negative state, it then sort of creates a life of its own. And therefore, in order for it to survive, it has to have a host. So many times it tries to attach itself to like-minded people so that it can survive. It's, it's almost as if the survival instinct is programming every single fiber, cell, light filament of our entire being. And then on the other hand, more in line with the question that the person asked me, there are negative forces who cannot gain access to the high realms that are stuck in the lower dimension. You call these entities demons. These entities attach themselves not only to humans but other life forms, but you have to be of or within their frequency or vibration for them to attach themselves. Someone who is very loving, caring, and compassionate and who is not consumed with negativity, these entities cannot perceive them, so therefore they cannot at attach themselves to such entities because they will be on a different vibration. Many of us are not really clear or understand the basic metaphysics of how the universe is governed. Just like right now, we all can perceive one another because you have different levels of consciousness that can incarnate and share this internet-like 3D experience. We can perceive one another, but then there's infinite amounts of interaction that's going on around us that we cannot perceive because we are not within or locked in those frequencies or sharing those frequencies. We can't perceive them unless we do something in terms of astral projecting. But all it is is shifting your consciousness beyond this channel so to speak and you're broadcasting from a different level universal properties none of us can escape them so if you are a negative thinking or person of a low vibration and you have an astral projection experience yes 
those entities that are in the lower dimension can see you because you're sharing their frequency. You can have a, a break in your auric field and this is how they attach themselves. If you are of a negative energy and they perceive you, they're going to be drawn to you. And if you have a crack in your aura, they can psychically attach themselves to that crack and then influence you and your behavior, which many of us think is a possession, but it's really an attachment. I cannot stress this enough. They will only be able to perceive or resonate with those who share their frequency. Please get out of the mindset that astral projection alone is something that can attract these things. It's astral projecting in a certain low vibrational state of mind. I want to say one more thing before I conclude this video. I always tell people to be careful when you astral project. Be sure that your state of mind is clear, that you are not someone who's harboring hatred, greed, or in a lustful state of mind. If you're someone who is a manipulating type of energy, do not astral project because you are opening yourself up to some things that really isn't pleasant, but in a strange way, it really is magnetizing maybe a thousand times more of what you actually are. So astral projection really is a mirror of all of us to begin with. But if you do not want your inner light or darkness, if you can't handle an entity or entities attracting themselves to you and and basically re-manifesting who and what you really are on the inside a thousand folds over do not touch or come near astral projection control has always been the name of the game for those of us who are very elevated in knowledge but are grossly submerged in ego those who have an insatiable appetite to control and dominate others are very intolerant of independent thinking and the free sharing of information. One should wonder and question, why are the mainstream circles pushing so much fear-mongering, disinformation, and propaganda in the minds of so many when it comes to astral projection or anything that could expand our minds? Why has there been such a concerted effort by the mainstream media and historic institutions to suppress and in some cases ridicule astral projection when it has always been a part of our existence? These are questions that I wish for us to stop. Think and ponder upon.